Hello everyone, we are back with the seventh series. We interviewed for you surf legend, world champion, surf photographers, shapers, and many more. We hope you like the series and please stay tuned for more amazing news. Mahalo. Hello everyone and welcome to the 13th episode of the 7th series of the Temple of Surf, the podcast. Today with us from California is artist and photographer Chris Burkhardt. I discovered with him about surf photography, surf, surfboards and much more. Hi Chris, welcome to the show. Where are you today? I am at my studio in Pismo Beach, California. Um, uh, just a little beach town kind of right in the center of the state and i've been i've grown i grew up here actually and this is kind of where i my business is staged and yeah i've been here been here for a long time i love it yeah fantastic we all love california and uh, california waves even if they are clouded so yeah. uh, what do you do? <laughs> i i certainly agree with you there it's, it's it gets a little a little little crowded here for sure yeah, it's uh, part of the evolution of the sport and uh, definitely uh, more and more people are getting into surf culture. And that's like, uh, uh, if you want to say, the not the like the best side of the medal that uh, our waves are getting so crowded and it's very difficult to surf. But anyway, <laughs> we will talk about California waves maybe another time. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, you, uh, about surf, surf photography. But the first question that I have for you is, in your opinion, what is the most important thing in surf? What is the most important thing in surf? I mean, that's a that's a broad question. <laughs> I guess for me, it's it's the personal connection with the ocean itself, right? I think that is the crucial thing, and uh, uh, it's interesting having been somebody who has you know traveled to these remote environments. Um, and seen cultures that are honestly just afraid of the ocean. They're terrified. Like uh, having gone to some of these, you know, more remote Arctic environments where people associate the ocean with like it provides food and it provides sustenance, but like it's not a place to play. And so I think that somebody who is, you know, in California or in Italy or, or anywhere that the ocean is this place that we like spend time we should really feel a privilege like it's a it's a gift to be able to do that and i think that um one of my favorite things as a photographer has been to go to places and demonstrate some of these smaller villages smaller cultures that the ocean can be an environment where you can find joy and peace and have fun and i think that that comes with you know, being able to learn how to read it, learn how to kind of connect with it. Um, but I've seen this happen a lot. Like I've, I've seen, I've had the opportunity to be on trips where we've like pushed people into their first waves and gotten them in a wetsuit and made them feel safe. And that's like a really eye-opening experience. So I guess to answer your question, that's kind of one of the things I think that is the most important for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, I really dig in what you're saying, because, you know, like, uh, we talk about, uh, we started to say about California waves are very crowded, but there are like a lot of waves all across the world where are not crowded also because the population there is not used, as you say, to see it as a, as a enjoyment uh, area. And maybe I was thinking about maybe India, uh, maybe like without going so far into like a unpopulated area or uh, where basically uh, was uh, nobody goes and surf, even if they have ocean and waves, you know. So, yeah, it's, um, but it's a good relationship that we must maintain with the ocean, right? Is uh, mm. is uh, is evolving every day, you know, if we don't commit to that, we risk to destroy everything. What do you think? It's interesting because I, I think that like my relationship with the sea, with the ocean has changed over the years. Like I used to go to the beach every single day. Nowadays, you know, I'll be, I'll be transparent. Like I, I, I'm not, I'm not surfing every day. I'm not body surfing every day. Um, but I, I feel this sense of peace, just living by it, just, just seeing it every day, whether I'm on a trail run and I'm above the ocean looking down or whether I'm shooting and I find that sense of peace. It's funny because for some people who maybe didn't grow up by the ocean, 
it's kind of a scary thing. Like you're like, whoa, land ends. And then that's it. It's just the mm. ocean. Um, but for me, I, I feel a sense of comfort, a sense of peace there. Um, my relationship over the years has evolved immensely. Um, and I think that whether I, I guess in some way, like it's always a place I can come back to. It's always a place I can like dip my feet in, dip my head in, immerse myself. And I don't know how to put this, but like there have been times where like I've been away traveling for months or in foreign countries and I come back to like my local beach where I learn to swim and get in the ocean. Like I just feel overwhelmed with emotion. Like I want to cry, you know, I want to uh, like it's a release. And um, and I think that that's kind of the connection with the sea that I really appreciate. I really respect um, because there are times in my life where like I've never been more scared. Mm -hmm. um, being in the ocean, you know, swimming as a photographer, big surf and all that stuff. And then there's other times where I've, I feel like I've never felt more comforted, more kind of taken care of. It's a weird, it's a, it's a weird thing. And it's a dynamic that's really important to, to study and think about, you know? Yeah. It's very dynamic in effect, you know, if, uh, yeah. uh ocean can be, uh, <laughs> the best friend and the best enemy, at the same time, right? And the worst enemy, actually, at the same time. So it's... Um, You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. We have we have uh, to respect. Uh, this is actually what the elders of the surf, like, they are saying to us. It's like, you have to respect the ocean, you know, because uh, one day it can be nice and or maybe in, there is a set coming up and, you know, it's going to be, like, super powerful and you need to be to be there and to be ready and to be aware of what's going around you. Right. So you're, you're absolutely right. You know, this is, um, this is kind of one of the, one of the aspects of it that's so unique is it's ever evolving and it changes day to day. And I, I think that one of the skill sets that has been really valuable for me growing up, you know, being a surf photographer, growing up in by the ocean is learning how to read the ocean. It becomes so much less scary when you can interpret it like, oh, there's a double up coming. There's two waves that are joining together. It's going to be very high energy or like, oh, this one's like the second wave of the set. It's like sucking up or like, oh, I can see a rip current. I can. That's all really helpful if you want to find peace and comfort. And that comes from kind of studying it and understanding it and just time, spending time. But the thing I, I the lesson that I think I've learned the most from the ocean itself is is kind of learning how to let go. Like there are certain sports we do, certain aspects where you just have to like push through the hard thing. You have to push through or you have to like apply a really regimented set of skills, you know, like mountain biking or whatever it is, skiing. With the ocean specifically, so much of it is about letting go. Like if a wave is coming over your head and it's going to land on you or in front of you or behind you or whatever, you you need to push to a certain extent, but then you also need to relax, you know, because if you're going to get thrashed and you're going to get spun around and you've got a water housing in your hand that could like break your nose or hit your face, um, or if you got a board in your hand that could, you know, you, you need to learn how to relax. And, and that's like something that's almost unteachable, I guess you could say, like without experience. And so um, I, I've really loved the idea of being in the ocean without any board or craft or anything, just a pair of fins, maybe body surfing, because you, you, you really like strip it down to the most raw experience and you are, you're kind of immersed in that, right? It's a really special thing. And, and it teaches you to kind of like, let go of the safety net. And that's so crucial, like letting go so that you can really feel everything. And in feeling everything, you kind of learn where you can release and where you can like, where you have to hold on to. Oh my God, you know, I'm thinking like my my head started to think about a lot of other questions, but you know, I, I feel, uh, start, let's say, <laughs> I got overwhelmed, I uh, almost in tilt, but I think, you know, at the moment that you commit into a wave, you don't have to think too much, right? Because yeah. it, like in any other things, if you think too much, then you risk to ruin it, right? And so you need just to go, go and uh, kind of abandon what uh, are maybe the teaching or what uh, how the perfect way like to, to ride is just like create that space, you know? And maybe is uh, one of the reasons why uh, the, other thing, uh, the other thing I was thinking about is like, uh, uh, for instance, Tom Carroll, 
uh, mm -hmm. world champion, Australian. Uh, now is teaching meditation. Yeah. And our, yeah. and our clause is that to create that space of med meditation, uh, when you are in the water, uh, under the water, or outside the water, how important it is to, to have that space, you know, that uh, I think the ocean allows that to create that space to en enhance, maybe, right? Well, I think that anybody who spent enough time in the ocean, you know, you, you, there's that recent clip of Brad Gerlach that was going around the internet where he's talking about like even the words we use to describe how we surf a wave, you know, we use these like very destructive words, these very like ag aggressive kind of like, Oh, we, we bash the lip. We do this. I I've, I've really enjoyed listening to that clip because I think there's a common theme with photography. We talk about like capturing the image, you know? <laughs> um, and I, and I think there's something different where like, when we attune ourselves to maybe a slightly different frequency where it's really about like the joy of the experience and like, did I fulfill myself out there? It becomes less about putting on a performance and more about like, you know, pushing your own limits and making sure that you are first and foremost satisfied as opposed to like performing for somebody else in the lineup or a judge or yourself. And, um, I think it's super telling that someone, you know, someone would, would turn to meditation because it's like, of course, why not? Like their whole life out in the sea has been one big, incredible meditative experience. And so for them to all of a sudden be able to offer that to others yeah. as a way to, um, to kind of translate that experience is, yeah. is critical. It's super cru crucial. I mean, that's, to me, that's like what photography is also. It is a transcendent meditative experience. I don't know how to teach that, to be honest. I don't know how to share that with people. I, I'm not sure that I have the words or the, the, you know, the functionality in my brain to like articulate that. Um, but I do know that like, there are times where the act of taking a photograph feels effortless and fun and joyful and fills me up emotionally. And there are times where it feels like I'm forcing it. And I'm not saying, and I, I think that with, with surfing, with any sports, there's a correlation. It's okay to sometimes force it. Sometimes you have to, that's your job. You got to get it done, but we should be aware of that. We should be cognizant to it. And the more cognizant we are to it, the more we can kind of like understand which conditions we're putting ourselves in that force us to do that and which conditions don't, and then try to put ourselves in a situation where we can do that less, less of the forcing, less of the, you know, performing and, and more about what feeds us and fuels us emotionally, physically, things like that. It's interesting what you're saying about that. You would not be able to teach somebody how to, to be a photographer because you know, there is like a technical aspect that is I mean, it's not easy, <laughs> but is is if you if you put yourself into it and you you might get it, but there is more than that, right? It's like, you know. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I can teach someone photography very well. I mean, I can, I'm sure. I, can I can I can, uh, I can teach somebody how to take a good picture. But that's but that's that's interesting because that's just my interpretation of what's a good picture. And my interpretation of what's a good picture comes from an emotional point of view. Like I feel fulfilled when I take a photograph that tells this story. Sometimes it's about the place. Sometimes it's about the character. Sometimes it's about how much I suffered in the process of making it. Like there's all these components that that make up what I would imagine to be like a good photograph. So I, I think that for me to teach somebody else, I'm just teaching them my perspective, really, right? Like for someone to find their own perspective, their own voice, they need to get outside of the current trends and the current norms and maybe what, what their heroes or their, um, the people they look up to are doing and, and figure out that for themselves. Yeah, because today with the equipment that people has, right, it's easier to take like a good picture by definition, I mean, versus maybe the time of the film, you know, and just like, it's easier to take, maybe because you can take maybe 200, 300 of them. So it's the law of uh, big numbers, you know, maybe one yeah. is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is good. But mm -hmm. on the other side, yes, uh, uh, the picture is more than the static moment that you represent. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say 
so much so that any really good image um, is going to have a backstory that that is so long and so deep that it, it should be like it should take a whole podcast to tell it. Right. Like, <laughs> I think that I think that ultimately, you know, I've spoken about this a lot, but trying to sum up a single image in just a, a tiny shitty caption is is such like a a super flourish like activity. Like we're just never going to be able to really activate, you know, our emotions ourselves in this tiny space on social media. Um, I think this is why like books, this is why films are often created to tell a deeper, more immersive story. And I, I hope that a lot of the photographers out there are thinking like that. Like photography is awesome, but you become limited. Your hands become a little chained, right? Like if the story is really meant to be this big, don't, don't tie yourself to something that only gives you this much to say. Um, when when we made the film Under an Arctic Sky, you know, that that whole film originated from a photograph, from the idea of taking a photograph. And we knew that the storyline to get to that place was so deep and so immersive and had so many layers about friendship and risk and 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 just everything you can imagine, exploration that there was no way to, that we could ever sum up this story in a magazine article or in a social media post. So, so we decided to try and look for funding and we tried to make a real film and we, we did, and people believed in that vision. And I think that's a big part of it is if the vision is good, people will usually believe in it and support you. And that, it feels really good to have told that story in the way that I think it was intended to be told. Yeah. A, a video actually is easier to be digested, maybe, mm -hmm. than yeah. a book, right? Because today's society is not maybe really to book, rather is more like in something that can be uh, digested quickly or quicker, you know? I also book at cost, right? Cost of shipping, yeah. cost of making. So how, because you've done a lot of books, but, and I guess you're going to continue to do that, I think is like a part of... Uh, part of your um, aura, you know, part of what, who you are as artist, right? Yeah. So how, how do you see that? Because, you know, in, in the modern society, book are kind of disappear. So would you con continue to do, to do that and uh, tell your stories? Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think that it's a matter of providing yourself with different options to express oneself right so in the beginning think about this you know like you're a professional surfer and you know you 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 have become really talented and some sponsors see your talent and they want to pay you and you have this one way of expressing oneself and you see a lot of these people who like they they kind of tell themselves oh well i've got this one way to do it so i've just got to push every put everything i can into that one basket and and at a certain point they get burnt out they get kind of fried on like competing and doing this and and then you see this other like realm of people kind of like the alex nose of the world or the mikey february's where like there's a lot more interesting parts to them we cling to these people as these sort of icons of the sport, because they offer more than just, you know, mainstream, interesting surfing, right? They, they've got talent and, 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 or they have in, something interesting to say, or like when they're creating a storyline, like there's something deeper. So as a photographer, it's the same process. Like when I was young, 20, you know, one, 22, all I had was my camera. That was the only way I could tell a story. Like I was just limited. I had this one tool in my tool belt. As I've gotten older, I realized, holy cow, like this is really limiting. And this feels like I'm, I'm a little suffocated. So I wanted to expand. I started to make like short, short films, like working with a friend of mine, uh, ben Wyland to to go on trips and then all of a sudden we we bring a cinematographer like bring a filmer or Ben yeah. would film or I would film so we're we're slightly expanding our skill set and then all of a sudden we were going and doing doing film tours I was going to like Mollusk Surf Shop and and you know with Jack Surf Shop in Huntington Beach and we're doing a film tour and with that film tour it was like okay well now you're doing a slideshow and so you're you're showing your photos you're showing your video and you're you're public speaking because you're having to entertain a crowd. So all of a sudden you have another skill set and now you're, you're actually articulating to people and trying to capture their attention of what you experience. You're talking about a photograph, but it's not about the photograph because they can see it. You know, you don't need to tell them like, yo, 
we were in the snow and the waves were big. It's like, this is what brought us to this moment. This is what we saw. This is what we felt. This is what we experienced. So that was just an extension of trying to like slightly, slowly build upon our experiences. I, again, I don't have the answer for what everybody needs to do That's to make this a part of their life. All I have is my own experience that I can share. And so this was my experience. I like slowly built up more and more skill sets that now I felt comfortable. Uh, I don't know how to put this, but like selling myself as okay. like, oh, well, I can, I can present for you guys, for this brand or for this company or for whatever. I can do a presentation. I can, I can direct a film because after doing it, you know, four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times you feel a lot more secure doing that. So obviously nowadays in order to, I guess you could say manifest creativity, I'm thinking about it from all these different lenses, these okay. like these five or six options. And that feels very fulfilling to me as opposed to being very limited, very narrow. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So if, uh, if I had to ask you what was the most important thing in the, what is the most important thing in surf photography, then I think the answer will be storytelling or I'm wrong. Absolutely. I mean, I would say that nowadays <laughs> the word storytelling is kind of like adventure, like it's commonly overused. Yes. Um, <laughs> and and uh, b- because like, what is storytelling, right? I would say first and foremost, that great stories are the ones where you're really able to like give a piece of yourself or be vulnerable, yep. put it all on the line. I do love and appreciate the stories I see where the filmmaker or the author or whoever is like really interjecting themselves. They're really putting it out there, you know, like they're um, it doesn't mean that the budget has to be super high, but like they're immersed in it. They're sharing a piece of themselves. Um, Art, art should be scary. We should give ourselves permission to fail. I think, I think nowadays one of the biggest issues I see within the artistic community and again, I'm I'm talking about like an echo chamber here because I'm really just referring to like social media is that people are really afraid to like fail. People are really afraid to like put work out there that maybe sucks. And, and I and I get it like it, it's not great putting something <laughs> putting something out there that kind of flops. But how else will you learn? I, I just personally right. don't know another way. I don't I don't really know. And people don't like that answer. People like want to know how to like refine things to a perfect degree and then everything they do is successful. But I come from a place of like having thrown a lot of, uh, or swung the bat a lot of times and missed the ball many times. Yeah. What doesn't kill us mess, make us stronger. Right. So at the end of the day, we learn from our own mistakes, you know, and we have to have the courage to release out there things that maybe are meaningful for us, but are not really liked by people and learn. Mm-hmm about that you know like in a certain way if you look at the instagram uh today or in the social media we are all top surfers we never do mistake there is never a wipeout there is never like a wrong way we are always posting the best and this actually it's kind of ruining society you know because Mm -hmm. it's pushing up and up and up and like doing mistake it's kind of failure while doing mistake is part of the journey right well i I also think that like in my mind you know especially when you look at like competitive surfing those people are you know being judged and and they're they're being they're, they're trying to you know again fulfill the highest level of of their expertise as well as for their sponsors it only bodes well for them to like not fall. Right. Mm. But this is why it's so fun to watch somebody surf who isn't afraid to like try something and just huge. And it really makes you question, you know, if you're watching, you know, some of the Brazilian surfers on tour who seem like they're glued to their board, they're so mechanical. They're so perfect. I'm always like, well, well, how much bigger could they go? How much harder could they go if they're like landing everything 99% of the time? Like, like I would, I would love to see like way higher scores for somebody just trying to go for it. And then I don't know. I, I think that like, again, like you said, our society kind of um, has just made it the situation where we reward like the perfect performance, but in order to, in, in, in doing so, we kind of get this like formulaic performance or this dulled down thing, which is tough and really tricky. 
Right. It would be actually nice to see those giants of surf, like, I don't know, Kelly Slater, that once he posts, like, my worst wipeout, you know. I think it would be maybe more successful as a video than just another perfect 10 waves, you know. We are used to that. I, <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> so that goes with Italo Ferreira and goes with all the Brazilians of, uh, of today that obviously I agree with you. Yeah. where they can go i mean they they will be flying taking off and you know like michael jordan stay on uh, <laughs> flying in uh, in the in the basketball field so it's uh, it's quite interesting yes it really is it really is and and so we were talking about perspectives right uh, so there is like a, a perspective actually you can answer because you 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 will surf and are surf of ocean photographer and more. <laughs> so the two perspectives are completely different, right? But uh, both, uh, I would say, engaging and rewarding. So tell us more about your perspective. So when you are inside the water and you're taking surf pictures, what you're looking at? Um, that's a great question. You know, I think in the beginning, I was just looking at things from the perspective of like, how can I how can I, like, this is early, early in my career. I was like looking at the magazines and I'm like, oh my gosh, how can I create what I'm seeing in the magazines? And that's just like the common process. You know, we want to, we want to like, you know, go out there and, and do more of what we've seen. Right. That's kind of a, that's kind of like that hero worship I'm talking about. You know, we, sometimes we worship like the Scott Eichners of the world or the Seth Staffords or the, you know, Daniel Russo's or whatever. And I think at a certain point, um, I sort of realized like, Hey, that's not my calling. I'm not the fish eye guy. Who's going to go, um, you know, sit under the lip at pipe, but it doesn't mean you can't create beautiful, unique images that tell a deep uh, and, and interesting story. And so I think that for me, I just tried to find my own approach when I'm in the water, you know, I'm, I'm looking for like really unique lighting situations. I'm looking for significant, um, significant kind of, uh, weather patterns that are going to like make the image just come to life. Right. I want to be the guy that gets in the water, like right before a storm rolls in or something like that to kind of gather that. And I felt, I felt like in some ways, it's also a matter of, of shifting focus from sharing and shooting images where it was just like, okay, we got this, you know, the, the beautiful fisheye barrel shot to like, I want something that feels a little more real, like shooting with a 24 millimeter, shooting with a 35 millimeter, something closer to what the eye sees, because that starts to put forward a storyline that, that feels a little more, um, natural because it's kind of the perspective you see when you're paddling out and you look over at your friend. I always love that perspective. I always love the perspective of like, you know, if I'm in the water and there's a surfer and the peak and here's the wave, I want to like have something between me and that surfer. I want to have someone else paddling out to like, almost like create foreground to create something like that. Or I want to have like something in the background. Um, and so that, that's kind of the, the process or the mentality that I approach things from tried to find um, when I was in the water. Sometimes you just don't have it. Sometimes you just got to go for it. And that's what it is. But when that's an option, that always is like the coolest way to, to create photos. I think, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And as you said, everyone has his own recipe, right. But, uh, but it was, for me, it's very interesting, you know, like we always see the waves from our stand up, like kind of perspective and you see it from a, a total uh, different one so it was interesting to see your point of view let's talk about surfers for for a moment uh, i'm sure you met a lot of surfers some of them were famous some of them were not was there a meeting that was particularly meaningful for you i would say that you know growing up i was a huge fan of the malloys um you know keith chris and dan and having had a chance to like work with them and travel with them pretty extensively was really meaningful. Um, me and Keith went to, you know, Russia and Norway and Iceland and, and just some incredible, incredible places. And, and I mean, obviously like those relationships form into something bigger than just like, you know, a picture taking kind of relationship, you know, you get to know these people, you get to know their perspective. And um, I'd also say like Dan Gadowskis and the Gadowskis brothers as a whole have just been like such important people in my career path. 
um, Josh Molkoy, you know, there's, it's a funny thing though, because I feel like I like the, uh, for me personally, I love like the very top tier, top tier athletes, you know, the Kelly Slaters of the world and that those are great, great people and, and amazing athletes. But I feel like it's hard to foster like a really genuine experience with someone like that. Who's like, has so many things being asked of them and are going so many places. And for me, it was always on these expeditions that you would formulate really meaningful relationships. I was lucky enough to shoot with, you know, Andy irons right before he passed away and, and have some, you know, great sessions with Kelly and whatnot. But like, it's these people that I mentioned, you know, the Malloy's, no. Molkoy, the Gadowskis is that like, these were like brothers and people that, you know, you would want to bring on a trip because essentially you could, you know, you could put your life in their hands and they would be like, they would watch out for you. Like that was crucial to me. And that, that extends more to more to me than just like surfing or being able to like go out and, um, and catch great waves. Like you're, you're, you're going on real life-changing trips yeah. and that's just the most important thing. And when it would result in like a great photo or a cover or something like that, it was it, epic. It, I mean, even you, better. <laughs> yeah. But you, you feel like you're like creating something and it's a celebration for the both of you, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. I see what you mean. And you know, that's the reason why I'm asking this question uh, all the time in the podcast, because some people, they will answer me like, okay, you know, I met the hero of when I was young and that was like, great moment for me and then other people they go back to uh people that were unknown or non unknown to few and that would that those experiences were very meaningful for them and you know again every day when we go out for surfing you know and we chat on the lineup or we don't or we go for a surf trip with some friends you know is that belonging together is that experience that you share that particular moment that I, I guess makes the whole surfing experience even more uh, rewarding, you know, is that, I, I, yeah, I mean, I would say so for sure, you know, like, you know, you, the whole point of, of surfing is it's typically something that like, you get a chance to feel like you're part of a tribe, you know, and that's, that's a, you know, humans, we, we exist in these kind of tribal mentalities and what I mean by that is like, we're looking for like connectivity within people, you know, you can call it a gang, you can call it a tribe, you can call it whatever the hell you want, yeah. but ultimately like we're looking for, for connectivity, um, their human connectivity. And, and I think that, um, that's special, right? Like that's a, that's a unique thing. It's why we want to like, you know, um, it's why we want to like associate ourselves with the sports group, or we want to associate ourselves as like, you know, the, the skateboarder in high school or the surfer, whatever it is, like we want to. Yeah. We want to look like them. We want to. So um, I think it's it's a unique environment to when you're when you are you feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself, and that's fun. Like you you kind of become a fringe representative of that sport of that activity, and and that was I think that's kind of one of the fun things about when I was shooting surfing full time for a living and being able to travel with some of these guys a lot, you know, like month to month, it was, uh, it felt really like a, a critical part of my life, a critical part of like my, my upbringing and, um, something that I like still to this day, like, I just, I wouldn't change that for the world. No. It wasn't the most, the greatest money-making venture, you know, I probably <laughs> lost, lost more money than I earned, but, um, the, the things it taught me were just invaluable, you know, and yeah. I, I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, then we go back in a certain way to to storytelling, you know, like uh, not storytelling, but you know, it's like when you go to a bar and you have a friends and you start to discuss about life and that becomes interesting in just the normal chit chat, you know, that is like, oh, yeah. So it's, uh, it adds up a layer, you know, and then it goes into also photography. You know, it starts mm -hmm. from there and then it develops. So uh, we're getting almost to the end of the, the interview, but uh, I, I, my God, I prepared like so many questions. I have done basically 20% of that, I, but I like the way the conversation built up. So you're working, I mean, you are very, very busy. <laughs> Obviously you are traveling the world. Uh, what are you working on today? Uh, well, I'm, I'm still, I'm still lucky enough to shoot a bit for 
a few brands within the surf space. I'm, I, I've, I've been actually uh, working on some projects with Billabong. Um, just got back from from going to, to Norway with them this March, which is a place I've obviously been many times and and I love a lot. But I'm still kind of eagerly pushing forward with uh, projects that like you know push the element of adventure for me. And whether that is in the surf space or riding my bike, doing uh, you know cycling expeditions, um, I think anything that gets me outside is yeah. makes me happy, you know, and um, maybe more importantly to that than that is the fact that like, when I get to do projects that involve a beautiful, unique environment, and at the same time, allow me to take photographs to tell, tell that story, I feel so fulfilled. Yeah. Um, these days, um, basically in California right now, have to do a little store tour around the U S early October then I'll be heading out to Utah for a project. Then I'll be um, then I'll be going back to Iceland for probably a month in November to work on a couple of projects something for Red Bull. And kind of you know life doesn't give me many breaks. I mean I love it like that, <laughs> but um, I stay busy. So um, a lot of stuff going on, and and next year looks to be just as as busy and awesome. And I kind of like it like that, you know, in, in a good way. Yeah, yeah, definitely because it's like. You like what you do, and so that it should be easier, right? It's intense, but it's yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love I love what I do, and and I get I feel like nowadays when I tell people like, yeah, I'm busy. I don't mean like, I there's different types of busy. There's busy where like you feel like it's out of control and yeah. you can't control it, and that's um, that's a scary space to be in, um, because because there's nothing worse than feeling like you're busy. And you don't have control over your schedule or what you love, because that just means you're like, you're choosing to do things that maybe, yeah. you know, somebody else has told you, but I love the fact that like, I'm, I'm able to, to still do the projects I love to do, feel connected to those projects, feel like they're meaningful, they're significant. And that's, that's immense. That's huge to me. That's like the most important thing, you know? No. Definitely. So the last six questions are uh, the same for everybody on this show. Uh, please answer the first thing that comes up to your mind. Okay. So oh, is this like rapid fire? Like, do I have rapid to tell fire, you? Rapid fire. Rapid oh, fire. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not great. I'm not great with these, Let, but I can let's, try. Let's try. Let's try. It's not difficult. <laughs> I hope. Um, the best surfboard that you ever ridden. Soft top. <laughs> Okay. Very specific on that. Okay. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Um, rapid fire, baby. Soft top. Easy. Uh, your favorite shaper. Favorite shaper. Uh, I mean, I would say Channel Islands for sure. You know, just easy, local. Personal um, question. Your favorite song. Oh, uh, uh, the weight by the band. Okay. Your favorite surf spot. Where I grew up, Pismo Beach, California. Favorite surfer of all time? Uh, Dan Malloy, probably. And the last question is a little bit unusual. We ask everybody on this show. We want to know your best relationship advice. Best relationship advice is to just basically make sure you see your partner, you know? And what I mean by that is like, see what their needs are. For me and my wife, you know, we've been together 15 years. A big part of it is making sure that we're both, both of us, are helping each other have experiences that are out of our comfort zone because then we grow together. We're not just doing more of the same. The older we get, the more in our own cycles we get, the more repetitive our life becomes. And it's crucial to just find ways to grow. You want to become, you know, like children again, kind of, you know, with full of creativity. And that's it. That's the, that's the best advice. I mean, yeah. thank, thank you so much. And I guess it means a lot from you also because you are traveling quite a lot. So you want, that those specific uh, time that you dedicate to your family are meaningful, totally. right? You know, yeah, you know, just the most it, the most it, important time I spend, you know, is with is with them doing that exactly. stuff. So, um, thanks a lot, cool, man. For Thank being you, on buddy. The show with me, and uh, I look forward to talk to you very soon. Yeah, my man. Thanks again. Talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. See Ciao. Bye bye. Hi, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed our today's episode. If you want to know more about us, please follow www.thetempleofsurf.com and all our social media. Mahalo! 